Hi, welcome to Lunar Moxie Tarot. I am the Benevolent Rebel and I'm here to do your all signs reading for the eclipse, okay? I'm going to go over the structure of the reading real quick with all of you guys and a general intro, all right? I will bookmark and chapter every sign, okay? There are really, really important aspects that apply generally to all of you guys that you guys will be able to interpret a little bit better than me since you know more about your personal charts than I do since I'm not looking at them. So I will go over the major aspects in the sky in the intro as well as um, as well as I pulled three I pulled three tarots for a general overall um, which this is take two of my intro by the way just like every other reading I've done this month I'm highly affected by this uh, Mercury retrograde although it hasn't slowed me down from work. It's just that I've had to take like five takes on everything. Okay. Um, needless to say I'm a Virgo and I have a Gemini moon. So um, needless to say, the general overall energy pull was, which I did on camera before, the Queen of Swords, okay? The Queen of Swords in the upright, which is how I want you all behaving around the time of this full moon, is a very um, directedly focused figure. This can be indicative of having talks with people you need to have talks with, okay? And sharing your emotions when they need to be shared in a positive manner, okay? Um, she is also very well respected for her advice, okay? And in the upright, she, she's a very honest, direct person, okay? So, Queen of Swords, okay? Second card I pulled was the Five of Wands, okay? This is bickering, sparring, okay? Battles, tactical cattiness, um, whatever, involving multitudes of people, okay? And in general, um, a full moon brings up issues and heightened emotions surrounding the most important things in our lives heightened emotions around home, family, intimate relationships, point blank. At a full moon, especially a full moon eclipse, this feeling is increased normally by 100, okay? Um, it will most highly affect those signs, right? It will trine any water sign within about, let's say, it's at 25 degrees and change. It will trine any water sign that's approximately between 22 to really 21 okay if you have anything 21 to um say 21 degrees to 29 degrees okay last decan pretty much of scorpio you will feel this you will feel the tension the tensions involved in the moon um to a greater degree okay anybody with anything at the latter degrees of any fixed signs aquarius leo taurus scorpio okay those are the signs, whether you have sun, moon, rising, Venus, and I do want you guys to always check your sun, moon, rising, and any stellums, okay, at a minimum, all right, and cross -walker, watchers welcome, which is why I do it as an all signs. Um, all right, anyway, this, um, those will feel heightened tensions, okay, especially those in the latter degrees of Aquarius, all right, Saturn is already there. I discussed this at the last eclipse, but because it was only at 10 degrees and change of Taurus, it did not really set off major issues with this with Saturn. Now it's an exact square to Saturn, which is sitting with Vesta. Vesta um, is an asteroid. There's like four important asteroids in modern astrology that we look at. Um, as, as, you know, in general, for, for general charts as well as, you know, general event charts, okay? Vesta is one of them. She represents the Vestal Virgins that were highly respected in the ancient world. They would be assigned to a temple or assigned to a city, and they would um, take a vow of celibacy. This is even more important because it is attached to Saturn, which is restrictive, karmic, routine, duty, sense of duty. So it can bring up workaholic tendencies, sexual repression tendencies, tendencies of this nature, okay, which kind of get like, you know, more aggravating around a time of, of, of heightened emotions where you actually want to share emotions with others, okay? So those feelings of restriction that we've had on ourselves around those things can feel heightened, okay, to a breaking point sometimes around a full moon. I will say that there are positive impacts of this full moon, okay, via a trine from Mars and Neptune, which are conjunct in Pisces, okay? Mars and Neptune conjunct are usually not a great conjunction, okay? Especially in Pisces, because Pisces can tend to be urethral and drown things out, and Pisces is a beautifully transformative sign, but, um, and Neptune is the higher octave of love, also of spirituality, also excellent for the creative arts, okay? When combined in, with Mars in a negative sense, it can bring on 
feelings of aggression as well as feelings of, of, de of delusion that are attached to Neptune. Okay, in this case, and this is the positive aspect that we have to this full moon, in this case, they are forming a trine to the moon. So we are going to have the beneficial aspects rather than the negative impacts of this conjunction, okay? And at the beneficial cause, you'll have um, courage and valor and drive towards the higher octave of love that will be in trying to the moon, which is an excellent thing because um, it doesn't always play out that way, especially with Mars and Neptune together, okay? In this instance, it will. So everybody, sorry, I hate when I leave my, sorry, I use it from my phone. Um, so in this case, that's what we want to um, tap into, okay? No matter what your sign. I am going to do a general spread for every sign and I'm going to discuss what houses the full moon will fall in for your sign, okay? Um, whether you're tapping into your sun, moon, or rising, okay? And um, then pull a spread for every sign. The other thing I would say and to do with that Mars Vesta deal is that is going to be in square or opposition to every other fixed sign at the same time. So it's those fixed signs um, which will feel the greatest amount of tension or any personal placements you have at those signs. For instance, if you have even a Mars, okay, and you have it opposing, if your Mars happens to be at 26 degrees or approximately 25, 26 degrees in Leo, you're going to feel a lot of tension because already you're going to have Saturn oppose your, um, your Mars, okay, and then it's going to form what's called a T-square showing you my general event chart, which I'm going to get to. But you see that big square, okay? That big square is called a T-square. When a square goes all the way across the circle in the middle, okay, there's a T-square. It's like a triangle on each side, on each side, okay? It's when two things oppose each other, which is would be, in this case, the moon and the sun, and then they form an aspect to a planet that's that is in a 90 degree angle on the other side, which in this case is Vesta and Saturn. Okay, that's called a T-square. In this case, if you have something in, in Leo, that would, form, that would make an actual complete square, which is called a grand square in astrology, okay? So um, take a look at those things. You know what your placements are better than, better than me, so I can just discuss the general astrology, and, but I will go through a house-by-house -house analysis. Um, the reason that Vesta and Saturn are also duly important, in my opinion, is because, like I said, Vesta represented the Vestal Virgins. One of the most famous Vestal Virgins and one of the most misunderstood mythological stories in ancient history is the story of Medusa, okay? Um, Medusa is looked at as this horrible woman with, a, you know, the tremendous stone with snake head and all that. Um, she was actually once a very, very beautiful woman, um, highly respected for her beauty, all right, who was either raped or bedded by Poseidon, the, the you know, god or lord of the sea, all right? Um, and the reason she was punished is because she was one of these Vestal Virgins. She had taken a vow to celibacy, all right, as a high priestess, all right, um, for the town in which she lived. And what happened was um, Athena became incredibly enraged that this act had taken place yeah, on or near the temple and or that she had already taken this vow of celibacy. So she wanted her punished. So her punishment, she, she was cursed to turn men into stone if she looked at them, all right, to banish her from her beauty, all right, and then the second thing that happened to her was Athena didn't let it go, and then she sent Perseus after her to kill her, all right, and behead her, but you couldn't look at her to fight her, so you had to fight her with a mirror, that's how he fought her, he had to fight her with a mirror to behead her, which he did, um, and that is when she, you know, started decaying and really turned you know, into the figure that we see today. Then that head was placed on the shield of Athena, and that is how she became a symbol to ward people off, and a symbol of, but it's, it's really a reflection of the ugliness of jealousy between women, <laughs> all right, as well as, um, as well as a whole bunch of other important themes to our history, okay, um, that can be applicable and looked at today, okay? So, um, insofar as fixed stars are concerned, in the sign of Pegasus, which is one of her children, born by laying w willingly or via rape with Poseidon, was Pegasus, as well as Chrysor, I believe, okay, which were born out of her neck when he cut off her head. So 
This is one of the um, most famous fixed stars in the um, in, in astrology. Okay, it's related to the star of Algol, A L G O L. All right, and the sun will be conjunct Algol at the time of the eclipse, which is in Taurus at 26 degrees approximately and change. So these themes. Just kind of keep them in the back of your mind, all right? The only general warning with algal is to kind of be extra cautious of, of accidents at this time, okay? Um, you may also see themes surrounding women um, arise around this time, okay? Um, but in general, I, you know, I, as a general warning, I, I'm not worried about that for the collective. Um, I'm worried about you guys just, you know, make sure that you're careful around machinery and stuff like that. Okay. Make sure you speak from the heart and that you tap into your feelings. Okay. Especially your feelings of restrictiveness for all signs. Okay. And to the higher octave of the trine that's set off. Okay. Between, um, Neptune and Mars and, and the moon. That's where the power lies as well as, the power will lie with any other trines that you guys have at this time, okay? And to recognize our feelings, as always, around any time of any full moon, okay? Um, just be aware of them, all right? And don't be afraid to speak on them to people that matter. That's it. Um, that said, sorry, I hope it wasn't a long lecture. Um, I'm going to move on to your general reading now, okay? I will re-reference, um, I'll pull our oracles as well as a general five, I'm gonna pull a six pointed star spread for every sign, okay? All right, that said, I'm gonna get some tea and then I'm gonna begin with you guys. I'm gonna start with Aries, Aries um, and all signs. Um, I am also gonna go over where Mars is for every sign, okay? As well as Pluto, since Mars is the ancient Hellenistic ruler of Scorpio where the full moon it will be occurring and Pluto is the modern ruler, okay? So that said, Aries, let's begin, shall we? I want to start with you, my ram. How are you? I'm going to pull a um, quick uh, spread for you guys, okay? Um, I'm probably not going to pull any clarifiers, but if I get a real big inkling on a big card, I'm, I may, okay? That said, let's cut for you, shall we? Bottom of the deck for you, Aries, is the Knight of Swords. Nope. <gasps> it's the Lovers followed by the Knight of Swords, <laughs> which is wonderful, okay? Um, you may have some issues of love coming around, all right? And our general uh, spread was, was did end with the Knight of Cups. Knight of Cups, offer of love, very chivalrous behavior. I don't think that there's any accident that it's like the Queen of Swords, which you want to watch out for any reverse Queen of Swords, with the Five of Wands, followed by the Knight of Cups, okay? So, um... I'm also going to pull your personal spread, okay? So, it's the lovers and the Knight of Swords on your pre-shuffle and the Page of Wands. All right. Wow, Aries, this is beautiful. Um, in the heart of your read, you have the sun, all right? This is indicative of the choice that you need to make around the time of this full moon. That is a choice to embrace ultimate happiness, joy in the deck. Sounds easy enough. Let's see if anything else is involved. What I see here as um, your goal is to focus on what you're working on right now, Aries, which has been all over your normal readings in general, all right? You have wonderful planetary placements. Um, a fear I see surrounding one of these hopes is heartbreak. And these hopes are based on what goal? Knight of Cups, who also popped up in the general theme of the reading. You have, um, you want to bring an offer of love and or a creative project forward around the time of this full moon that's heavy, heavy, heavy on your heart. Enough for the fear of heartbreak surrounding it, okay? The other goal that I see here for you is the Hierophant. Again, this tells me that this is an extreme commitment to a creative project that you have or an actual someone that you have feelings for that you want to bring a romantic offer to at this time. Heightened feelings around this at the time of the full moon, okay? Um, the fear I have around that is Nine of Pentacles. You have a little bit of fear of their independence or losing your own independence if you make a love offer in addition to that fear of heartbreak that it was already mentioned. And one of your hopes is for either a reconciliation, three of cups, okay, and or celebration, party, have fun, you know, enjoy yourself, all right? 
nothing, nothing dysfunctional I see or are off base about any of these things, okay? Your general notes are that this will fall uh, across the eighth and second house because you lead off the zodiac. Taurus naturally rules the second house, okay? The eighth house is ruled by Scorpio naturally and you have the perfect placement as the first wheel in the zodiac or first sign house in the zodiac, all right? So those of you that are true Aries rising, okay, or we're reading a general horoscope, this is gonna be in your second, okay, and eighth house access, specifically with the full moon in the eighth house with a heavy, heavy emphasis on sexual relationships, <laughs> all right, that lead to legacy, marriage, etc., contracts, blah, 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 deeper sex than normal sex, okay? Um, you know, some people should say that you shouldn't engage in sex unless it's the deep kind, okay? It happens to be a lot better, but anyway. Um, this is what's on your mind. This is what's showing up in your reading, which is so funny. Um, and as a note to that, you do have Mars, which is the traditional ruler of Scorpio, will be in your 12th house of Pisces, conjunct that Neptune. So that can be a hard place, okay, to have Mars in your 12th house can feel a little bit frustrating, like you can't express yourself fully, Aries, which an Aries doesn't like because they're very assertive, okay? They're frank and assertive and sincere. Okay, so when you feel restricted on your drive, Mars, which would have to do with sexual drive as well and is indicated by your spread, you're going to feel a little frustrated. Go for a run, Aries, okay? And express to the manner that you can express, okay, to the people that you care about, okay? Um, don't restrict yourself too much, okay? I do see um, that Pluto is in your 10th house, okay? Pluto in the 10th house is teetering towards the end of your 11th house. So you may have, and this is just a guess, some fears surrounding um, somehow this may be tied into career for you, okay? Because both of these heavy hitter Plutonian and Mars-like themes having to do with this full moon are tied into houses that are transiting your 10th house as well as your 12th house, okay? Take it as it resonates, okay? Um, Aries, you may feel like kind of you're walking on a quicksand towards what you want right now, okay? Um, I'm not going to pull any clarifiers for you because I don't want to do a three-hour reading for you guys and I really want this out today, but I am going to be pulling a, um, your, I am going to be pulling a weekly for the third and fourth week, okay? And your love reading will post by the end of this week as well, which I'm sure we'll tap into this, okay? Thank you, Aries, for being with me. I'm going to move on to Taurus now. Taurus, how are you? One of the superstars. If you guys are born in the latter degrees, okay, or have a sun, moon, rising, or Venus in the latter degrees of Taurus, you will especially be sparked by this full moon and have heightened feelings of um, opposition to depending on whether you're a sun, moon, rising, or um, Venus, all right, you're going to have some opposition from that full moon, okay? You may feel bound by your emotions at this time or feel that your personal self is challenged by emotions. If you have anybody that's significant in your life, with, a, with especially if they have a sun, moon, rising, or Venus in any fixed signs, okay, you're going to have heightened tensions from those people as well as your own tensions at this time, okay? So Taurus, this could be a hot one for you is, is my warning, okay? That said, let's pull a spread for you, shall we? <laughs> and take a look because it could be overwhelmingly wonderful. I'm just saying it's going to feel a little tense, okay? And you're going to feel that pretty intensely um, maybe a day or two before or after, okay? And then the after effects, the after quakes can last up to 28 days, even longer, okay? Depending on what goes down, okay? So that said, let's cut for you, Taurus. Bottom of the deck is the Ten of Wands, okay? That's a walk away, all right? Dropping heavy baggage. You're going to feel a desire to do that and stop bullshit, and the bullshit is going to be identified by wherever you're feeling those squares, okay? Which I went over in the intro if you haven't already heard it, okay? Um, that said, let's pull a little bit here. Hmm. Um, okay. Um, what I see for you right now, Taurus, is kind of plays wonderfully along as they always do uh -huh. um, for me somehow. Um, that 
always astounds me when I do tarot. But um, anyway, what I have here in the in the in the heart of your reading is two main goals. Okay, one is celebration. All right, and or reunion, and or reconciliation, and or you know party and whatever could be. Um, get-togethers with family, fun times. This is what you want. This is one of the things you really want right now, okay? Through, indicated by the Three of Cups, all right? What are your fears? Your fears surrounding this particular goal, King of Cups. Either another male figure that you're a little bit afraid of that may be acting in a reverse King of Cups-like manner, whether male or female, all right? All right, this would be a manipulative, think manipulative psychologist kind of thing, okay? Um, manipulative... Um, anybody that you trust, all right, on a deep, deep level, okay, that's acting in a very manipulative way or not necessarily helping you or overly emotional, reactive way, okay? I see a fear around this person. This person could be in the upright and you could be in the, which is why you fear them, <laughs> all right? Um, I, I'm not reading reversals in here, okay? I pulled this, I, I pulled this in the upright, okay? My, my deck was over, so I had to turn over all my cards, but um, I pulled this in the upright, okay? So you could literally have a fear about stepping fully into this deep emotional state as an upright king of cups, which you will need to do this. <laughs> you will need that to do this, okay? Um, and what I see here is that this may surround a decision because here I have the two of swords. So this says you're in your head about a decision don't know what that decision is, you do, all right? Um, but it's weighing heavily on your mind at this time, and I think that this is why you're having a problem with balancing these together, because you're in your head about a decision you're not talking about, that you feel bound up by or blinded some way in making for whatever reason, okay? You know better than me, all right? And I have another three here, because the other goal I see is a tower, so like I said, that tension is super, super strong for you right now. Super, super strong. If you are a sun, moon, rising, um, or Venus, Taurus, and you also happen to have a sun, moon, rising, okay, at Scorpio or Aquarius, you are at a breaking point right now. <laughs> because I have you here, okay, with a tower as a goal. That's a big deal to have a tower as a goal. You're basically hoping to upend some structure in your life that you don't feel as soundly you feel there's major problems in the structure of it period the end point blank there's something that you feel there are major problems in the structure of it for you to have a goal as a tower here that tells me the same okay i don't know what it is you do okay um what i have as a goal here is collaboration three of pentacles okay so somewhere across work and love here you don't feel like there's a good collaboration of sorts happening somewhere in your life in your most intimate relationships in your home that's what i'm picking up on here okay your goal is to have that okay your hope is to have that your hope is to make a decision okay you have some fear around emotions okay and then i also have a fear of wish fulfillment here something weird is going on here taurus okay i'm not pulling clarifiers in here all right but i will say that there's some sort of weird duality dichotomy where i'm seeing here that you have a fear of wish fulfillment and a fear of emotions they're showing up on the fear side related to these goals of wanting to bring a tower and wanting to have celebration or reconciliation okay and a hope to make a decision okay and the choice is there's five of swords Okay, as a choice. It's your choice how to make this easier or hard, okay? To have pyrrhic victories or not, okay? To um, win today, lose tomorrow. That's your choice. Win today, lose tomorrow, you know? How long can you keep that up? And I think that you fear, have fears around keeping that up. Otherwise, I wouldn't see a tower as a goal here, okay? Whoo, Taurus. I will see you guys in... Um, <laughs> I will pull some love reads and general reads the third and fourth week, okay? And I already posted your full monthly, so you were the first to be done on your regular spread and your love spread. Please check it if you haven't already. It's under a playlist for May in which this will, you know, all right? I will try and put a link to those uh, below, all right? Thank you so much for being here, Taurus. I'm going to move on to Gemini now. Let me know how it goes. Jemmy, 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 how are you? How's my Gemini? I hope you guys are doing well. All right, um, let me just take a look real quick right here. All right, yeah, this is going to fall across your 6th and 12th house, okay, with the full moon being in your 6th house, which is your house of service. 
House of Service, okay, which I've discussed a lot with you guys in your general readings, okay, as well as the eclipse reading for last month, okay, but you're going to have like heightened emotions around service. So whether that's in your home, whether you're a caretaker or whether you're in a service industry, okay, doctor, nurse, police force, whatever, you feel you're going to have heightened emotions around these things, caretaker to your grandmother, caretaker to your family, whatever it is, it's going to be like, boom, I'm doing a lot of this, I have a lot of emotion around it could be a setup for a blow up, just fair warning. <laughs> Don't blow your gasket, all right? You're, you may feel, you may feel you're like you need to, and there may be areas where you need to, okay? That's where you need to address where you're having more give than take, all right, Gem? All right, that you need to have a reset or a talk with somebody on an emotional level, okay? And use that for the positive emotional good that you can at the time of this full moon to talk before, a, before the uh, tea kettle goes off, so to say, or the water boils over, okay? That's my general advice for you, okay? Um, did I say where Mars and Pluto were? Oh, yeah. Mars is going to be in your 10th house, okay? Mars is your traditional ruler, so again, you will feel heightened tensions, okay, around the career, okay? And then Pluto in the 8th house, okay, legacy. So your major relationships, your career, da 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 da, da right? <laughs> Okay, these will play out in those manners. If I had your personal chart, I would also take a look at where those main planets play out in your personal chart as well. But I don't, so I'm doing the best I can without that. All right, so I'm going to cut this for you and take a look at the bottom of the deck. Four swords, rest and restoration. Okay, 12th house is perfect for that. All right, that's where the sun is going to be. So your soul and your mind is going to feel. Like, you really need some rest and restoration right now. And it could be a rest away from all your caretaking, okay? Those places where you maybe have been giving more than you feel like you're getting, okay? That said, goal, hope, fear. Six-pointed star, okay? Goal, hope, fear, choice. Whew, okay. All right, so... What I have here is that you have a goal of ending a chapter. I would say that it's directly related to what I just discussed, okay? I'm not pulling clarifiers in here. It's going to be directly related to the issues and items I just discussed and how they're specifically applicable in your own life, all right? Um, your goal, like I said, I love the way these cards play out, is to transform in this area, which is exactly what I just said, death card, okay? Your fear. Two of Cups, major love relationship. So you're either afraid to discuss these things and how they need to transform or properly address them with your significant other, or you're afraid, or you want love. Take it as it resonates with somebody you don't have. Take it as it resonates, whether you're single or coupled. This relates to transformation and a fear about discussing what needs to change with your significant other, okay? Um, what I also have here, or any significant love relationship in your life, could be with your mother. We're on caretaking here, okay? Could be with your child. Anybody you caretake for, okay? All right? Or care significantly about that impacts your sixth house, okay? And the other houses that I discussed based on those transits, okay? The other goal I see here is that you really do want to be able to talk from a healthy emotional space here. Queen of Cups or engage in a loving bond with your current partner or another one if you're single you know what this applies to okay um and um what i what i have here is that seven of cups all right you really do hope that there are some options here to work this out with okay and that you can fill up your cups properly choose the proper cups if you're single you may be worried about who you're choosing worried about picking the right one worried about doing everything right okay having a lot of feelings just sometimes you just need to take a little step okay towards something that you think that you want okay rather than sitting here and until you get glazed over okay little steps all right what I see here as a fear is four of pentacles you are worried about holding back or you're worried about losing your money one or the other take it as it resonates okay and um, somehow you're worried about those items and the triangulation of that together Maybe you have a fear that everything's about money, but you want to come from a more emotional heart space here. That's what I see as a goal. All right, and what I have as a choice is sit here with a blindfold on forever or make a decision. 
you are going to be in a heart space where it will be easier for you to identify those decisions and have the courage to talk from a good heart space, higher octave of Neptune, all right? Conjunct Mars, you will have the courage to open your mouth on things that you need to open your mouth on. Definitely take advantage, okay? Won't last forever. All right, Jim? Um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful full moon. Let me know how it goes. I will see you guys later. I have to move on to Cancer now. Cancer, 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 how are you guys? This is on the 5th and the 11th house access, all right? Especially if you're born in the latter degrees of Cancer or have a sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Latter degrees of Cancer will, um, or the third decan, right, basically 20 to 29 degrees of Cancer. It's going to have a greater impact. That said, it will also trine anything that you have in Scorpio or Pisces, all right? If you have anything in Scorpio or Pisces, besides the items that I already mentioned, such as the transit of um, Neptune conjunct Mars to this full moon already. You're going to have a double dip of trines. Bing, bing, bing. This will be an excellent one for you. All right. Um, anything that you have that is in the fixed signs, which I already mentioned, that will square and be a not so bing, bing, bing for you. <laughs> okay. Anybody you know, all right, especially if they're close, all right, intimate and or home family relationships or best friendships, all right, that have you know, a major sun, all right? Sometimes, unless you're into this, you really don't know people's moon signs. If you're into it, you do. <laughs> but a lot of times you don't know somebody's ascendant sign, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you know their sun signs. So if you have anybody with sun signs that are going to be squaring those aspects, those people are going to be a little bit heightened, all right? A little bit more tense, all right? Try to help them along as need be, especially if they're important to you, okay? Um, I am going to cut these cards for you and begin. Bottom of the deck is the Wounded Warrior, okay? Underneath that, King of Swords, maybe dealing with a um, Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini, or you have these significant placements in your chart, all right? You are hoping to act, if that is you, you are hoping to act in your King power even though you feel like a Wounded Warrior, okay? If that is somebody else, somebody else that's a wounded warrior maybe coming to talk to you of one of these signs. Take it as it resonates, okay? Um, that said. Hmm. All right, cancer. <laughs> we have to have a serious talk here. Don't use up all my all, all my all my airtime here on you today, okay? Um, all right. Again, this is fifth house and eleventh house. All right, with the full moon being in the fifth. The fifth house is children, creativity, and romance. I should see heightened, heightened, heightened indicators to that right now. I should see goals all over romance right now for you. You had a very strange love reading. Please go back and watch it if you haven't already. Okay, because what I'm getting here, all right, and maybe there's somebody you're trying to detach from here, okay, take it as it resonates. But what I have here is that you have a goal of heartbreak. Maybe this is healing a heartbreak, but I have a goal of heartbreak surrounding, no, no. This is a hope, a hope of heartbreak, hope of the devil, the devil. Cancer, what's up? All right. Four swords, the devil, heartbreak. What's going on? All right. Something is up. Okay. I have, I have like heartbreak, and it could be that you're dealing with a Capricorn. Whatever, whatever it is. I, I, the, I have a goal of heartbreak surrounding a devil, which could be a Capricorn, or could be that you want to end certain and recover from certain addictions in your life or codependent relationships. Take it as it resonates. Second goal I have, okay, is Hierophant. Okay? You either want to go after a Taurus or you have significant commitment on your mind. Okay? You want why? You want to break away from battles or bickering and sparring. Okay? But you also have a fear around foundations and commitments or marriage. There's a lot of duality here going on. Please go back and watch your love reading as well as your general reading. Okay? Because what I showed in your month before was that you had this wonderful person around you that you're like head over heels for. But I saw this stuff on the bottom of the deck last month. And then all that stuff came to the top of the deck this month in your romance reading. 
all right? Like it was heavily active, and now I see all these dichotomies playing out again here, all right? I have a choice here in the middle having to do with the fire sign, all right? Or somebody with significant fire placements of Leo, Aries, Sag, and or this is you. You want to be passionate. That's your choice. Are you going to be passionate? Are you going to step passionately into this role as a queen of wands? Or are you not? Only you can answer that question, Cancer. Go back and watch um, those readings. Whew. All right. All right, I've got to move to Leo now. <laughs> Let me know how it goes, Cancer, okay? This is fifth house. Should have heightened emotions around children, love, romance. Somewhere there's issues there where you, you don't have the, you, you're not, you don't have who you want or you're not, you, I don't know. <laughs> okay, too big of a story to go through in this general reading, but I definitely want to know how it goes. I can see it, I can feel it. it play out a couple different ways. I discussed it at length last month and this month in your romance reading. Please go back and take a look, okay, if you haven't seen those already. All right, enjoy that full moon, Cancer. Keep a positive mindset. All right, let me know how it goes. Leo, how are you? I am going to do a quick five card spread for you. Six card spread, actually. It's actually seven because I have a middle point. Okay, for you guys. For the full moon eclipse. For my Leo, please. This is so funny. Like uh, several signs have already gotten like your choice. It, your choice on how to handle your goals and your or in your hopes and your fears is to make a choice. Okay, so there's a lot of people stuck not making choices right now that they need to make. Your feelings surrounding these choices that you need to make right now are going to be heightened around the time of the full moon because you need to make some choices. Okay, and um, what I have here as a goal is ten of pentacles. All right, ultimate happiness, security at home. All right, family structure. Okay, that is one of your goals. Okay, and you want to, you know, plant your plant uh, and work properly towards that goal with the Seven of Pentacles. Okay, you have a slight fear surrounding that goal of being a wounded warrior or approaching somebody that feels like they have their walls up a little bit. Don't let that stop you. Not when you're chasing a Ten of Pentacles. All right, not when, not when you're after a Ten of Pentacles. Okay. Um, and the other thing I see is that there may be a need or you have some fears around cattiness, all right? Um, sparring, all right? There's a five of wands here, okay? Um, your goal is solid foundations, all right? Obviously, you need a solid foundation, ten of pentacles, all right? Marriage and or solid foundation, living together, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, all right? I do have a fear around um, a queen of swords. Queen of swords popped up. This person in the reverse is very mean and goes after people. Okay, in the upright, she's very assertive and does speak her mind when something needs to be spoken. All right, um, and whether that's you or somebody else, you know, you shouldn't have a fear around this person if they're acting in the upright. In fact, they came up as one of the main themes in the intro for the general overall themes. So you may have a fear of expressing this yourself. First of all, you have to have somebody to talk to. If you have somebody to talk to that you're speaking to in an upright Queen of Swords manner, that you're also in touch with your emotions on, have no fear, Leo. Have no fear. All right? Make the choice because that is, that is the decision. You have a choice, and it may involve money and or work, and you have to make the choice. Okay? So that said, let me know how it goes, Leo, okay? Um, oh, any other notes for you? Any other notes? Yeah, that is across your fourth and tenth house, okay? So fourth house is where you're going to feel the most of your emotions. That's your house of home, okay? So the full moon will be in the fourth house, okay? So very heightened emotions around the home and stability for wands issues, okay? And then um, let's see, where's Mars? Mars is transiting your eighth house, legacy, inheritance, ten of pentacles pop right there. Um, and Pluto is in... The sixth house. So there may be some issues around service, all right, that are transforming or feeling like kind of a burden or that you feel like maybe, you know, you need to make sure that you do all those above board, all right, to the best of your ability, 
all right, without any devil-like energy attached, all right, and you'll absolutely be fine flying colors. But I do see some tensions around the home, maybe a little bit heightened, and again, this um, will be in square to you, if you, especially if you're born in a last decan of Leo, all right? That said, have a wonderful, wonderful full moon. Let me know how it goes. I'm gonna move to Virgo now. Virgity Virg, how are you? I'm going to switch decks for a minute, okay? I get sick of using these decks without a bunch of shuffles in between. I may pause to shuffle more in a minute. Um, Virgity Virg, how are you? I missed you guys. You guys had a great reading the other day. Oh, third and ninth house with Mars in the seventh and Pluto in the fifth. <laughs> Intense there, huh, Virg? All right, Mars in the seventh. Mars is transiting your seventh since Pisces is your seventh, seventh sign. That gives you a big sex drive, Virg. I hope you have a place that you are properly expressing it, okay? Um, all right, with Mars in the seventh house, okay? Ups the sex drive, okay? With Neptune there attached, okay? I don't, I'm not really worried about you going out and betting everyone. Virgos don't usually do that anyway, but, um, you know, Neptune attaches some motion there to it, all right? Um, that said, Pluto is in the fifth, okay? So watch out for Plutonian-like characters coming into your life and your romantic life, all right, that are not trustworthy. At the same time, deeply transformative relationships and romance and deep transformations in romance can take place with Pluto um, transiting your fifth house, okay? Um, that said, this crosses the third house, which is communications. Had any problems with retrograde already? I have. Um, Berg. All right, crosses the third house, that's communications, also siblings and your immediate networks and environments, neighbors, et cetera, et cetera, okay, and general communications, okay? The full moon will bring a, height, a heightened, um, heightened emotions around those. If you, if you communicate as part of your work, you know, on an emotional level, you're gonna pass with flying colors because you're gonna be able to bring, you know, let's say you're a preacher, okay, or a rabbi. Whew you're gonna have the best service ever, <laughs> okay? The best service ever around the time of this full moon. So I would highly, um, if you're a poet, if you're, you know, whatever, you know, find places that you can express the positive aspects, okay, of your emotions, because, you know, you're gonna be a wonderful communicator around the time of this full moon, okay? Especially on an emotional level and passionate level, okay, Berg? That said, let's pull a little spread for you, shall we? Bottom of the deck is the Eight of Wands. What did I say about communication? Do it, Virg. Just do it. This Five of Wands and the Five of Swords have been so hot um, this month. It's incredible. Okay, Virg. Okay, this looks excellent. Um, I have a goal of temperance, all right, moderating you know, the new mix, alchemy, blend, all right, and your emotions, probably because you feel such a heightened state of emotions, and Virgos are not always comfortable with that, especially if we don't have anybody to properly express it to. It can um, lead to heightened feelings of anxiety for a Virgo, so definitely get some activity around the time of this full moon, Virgo. Um, what I see here is that there is some fears around money, okay? You have a hope to hold on to your money, or you're holding back a little bit on just some discussions surrounding money and or your heart here a little bit, Virg. All right, but I do have a page of wands and a fear. All right, you, you may be afraid of getting some news of some sort that is negative in some way. And all I'll say about that, Virgo, is if you haven't had it, don't worry about it. Can you do that? I know it's hard, I'm a Virgo, I know it's hard. Can you do that? That's what I want you to do. If you haven't had that news, don't spin on it at this full moon, okay? Um, all right, and then the other thing I see for you, all right, is that you wanna get away from cattiness or you have some fears around cattiness, five of wands, all right? Um, and what I see on that is that you have a hope of being on higher ground. Virgo, you usually do everything upright, okay? So unless you know that you've done something not in the upright, you know you're on higher ground already, okay? Excellent. Okay, I do have a fear around a king of wands, okay? Maybe um, you have a fear of, of being passionate, Virgo. Virgos, that can happen sometimes, all right? Um, you have a fear around being, um, you know, a, a, a king of wands, a, a passionate, charismatic person, okay? Um, look to the fire in your chart. If there is any fire, plug into that, Virg, okay? If this is another person you have a fear around, if they're in the reversed, 
stay away from them. If they're in the upright, have no fear, okay? Um, the other thing I see here, it's your choice, Virgo. It's the Two of Cups. It's the Two of Cups. Virgo, did you hear me? It's the Two of Cups. It's your choice, okay? You gonna take it or not? It's your choice. Eight of Wands and the Lovers. Virgo, if somebody comes to you that you feel passionately about and they're healthy, you know, nothing to fear but fear itself, Virgo. Only live once, okay? Um, all right. Let's go on to Libra now. Libra, Libra, Libra. How are you? I hope you guys are doing well. Let me just take a look at my, yeah, second and eighth house. This falls in your second and eighth house, Libra, although it'll be flip-flop for you, like the second and the eighth, because it's the natural ruler of the second. But if you're on the true ascendant, then um, it would be flip-flopped. Okay. So, anyway. Um, so, what I wanted to say about that is, obviously, it's going to, um, with Scorpio in your second house, it's going to bring a heightened sense of emotions around money, the way you earn income, et cetera, et cetera. And that is going to oppose your eighth house. All right, and if you have a sun, moon, rising, or Venus, and any of the fixed signs, this will be a little bit tougher for you, especially since it'll like uh, kind of off put your sense of self or emotions, whichever you're watching for Libra, against whatever aspect of the um, fixed sign you're dealing with. All right, whether that's a person around you or whether that's in your own personal chart, take it as it resonates since I'm not looking at your personal charts. Wow, I'll let you keep that. I don't know where to put it, I'm just gonna put it to the side. Shit. No, I'm going to put it back in. I got to. Sorry. What if it needs to come out in the other part? Um, if I was pulling another read, I would have kept it out, but I'm not. These are very specific, okay? That said, let's cut. The hangman. And the eight of cups. You're delaying walking away or you're stuck in a period of waiting about we'll walk away and the chariots after that okay let's see shall we wow um somebody else got a tower you just got a tower and a goal i think uh who was it that got that it was taurus if you are a Libra with a Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising um, mix, definitely cross-watch because you have a goal of a tower here. You want to bring a tower. There is some, peer, some area of your life you feel extreme frustration and a structure of to the point in which you have a goal of a tower. Okay? So this moon may bring that tower for you because it's actually one of your goals. So... The emotions may bubble over so much. Just make sure you express it in a healthy way. Make sure you check the intro on my notes on that. Okay? Um, what I have here associated with this tower is King of Pentacles. Okay? You're very concerned about your money right now and being probably a good father. King of Pentacles is a good father. Okay? Just in general. Um, and um, has enough time to enjoy his family as well as work. Okay? In general. All right? Um, in, the, in a healthy manner, okay? Especially if you do have Taurus, which I already mentioned, King of Pentacles is here, which is related to the sign of Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus, okay? Um, a fear I have is, which is odd, Nine of Cups. There may be something, again, this happens around the time of the full moon, something you don't have that you want, okay? Because I have like a fear around wish fulfillment here, all right? Maybe you feel like you're not going to get your wishes in some area of your life, or you're not currently having wish fulfillment in some area of your life, which is bringing up the flood of the boiling of emotions, especially surrounding the hot butt. I'm back. Sorry. Um, okay. So Libra, where I was, is that. Sorry. That for you. Um, all right. I went over the tower, um, and I went over King of Pentacles as well as the Six of Cups. Six of Cups is it here in a fear, okay? This fear is directly tied to family and soul ties, okay? So you're afraid to act in a king-like role here, all right? Um, okay, this this particular fear of the Six of Cups has to do with the Knight of Pentacles. You're afraid if you take action towards what you want, even if it's in a slow, methodical way, that a king would take. This is one of your goals, is to take progress towards the actions that you want in a King of Pentacles-like way, okay? that you can't for some reason or that your family is going to block you or that your soul tie is going to block you or somebody significant is going to block you or give you 
a headache, all right? And, um, and what I have as a hope here is a four of swords. You really hope that you can heal the situation, all right? But you are at a heightened state of, of emotions here, especially I can see that because of this nine of cups with this four of swords, okay? This dichotomy here, especially with a goal of a tower here and a goal of a knight of pentacles, you feel very restricted, all right? And making sound moves. Okay, so there's significant issues here, all right? And what I have here is, is a need for, for to be able to speak your mind and, and the choice is to instill proper boundaries where they need to be set, okay? All right, around your most intimate relationships, home, family, etc. okay? Because this is a choice, right? is to step into the emperor role or not, okay, here. All right, um, take it as, it as it resonates, Libra. Please let me know how it goes. I'll be thinking of you guys, and I'm going to move on to Scorpio now. Scorpio, how are you? Welcome. Please make sure you check my intro because I did all the general discussion of the transits um, that are hot for this particular full moon at the beginning and the intro and cross watch as needed. Okay, um, let me just take a look at the general chart here. Obviously, this is in your first and seventh house access with the sun being in the seventh house of Taurus, right? And the full moon being in your first house. This is going to express, you know, affect your outward personality and your, your most intimate house of self, okay? Um, so um, especially if you're born in the third decan of Scorpio, it's going to be particularly a heightened sense um, of time of emotions, which can be positive emotions. As I mentioned, those trines between Neptune and Mars, okay? And Mars is your traditional Hellenistic ruler. So I expect this to be a good full moon for you guys. I expect you guys to be just fine with it, quite honestly, okay? Whether, you, whether there's some pots stirred around you, you know, or not, um, I expect this to be a powerful full moon for any of you that are sun, moon, rising, and or Venus in the third decan, anywhere from in the latter part, okay? So that would be like, let's say the 15th through the 24th of November, okay? Um, generally, okay? And if you have any planets, even if your sun's not there, if you have any planets or ascendant there, or you're by the Sag cusp, okay? Gonna be a heightened time, all right? Mars is currently in your fifth house. That's romance. You have a big drive towards romance right now. Pluto's in the third. Pluto is transformative communication, okay? You have positive aspects with this positive push for valor and courage around the higher octave of love to speak right now in the power of your planet, okay? So you're gonna have a drive to do that and to speak on emotion, which Scorpio can do that better than anybody. I, I didn't mean to say that because it's not true. Sorry, Scorpio, as much as you would like to think it's true. But they're deep, okay? And when they need to speak deeply, they can. You know, there may have been some fears around it, though. So, I don't know. Let's pull a spread on it, shall we? High Priestess. Intuition. Higher octave. Plug in. Pisces. This is highly tied to Pisces. So that Neptune-Mars conjunction there of your sign with like Pisces modern ruler sign, that's going to be really high for you right now, okay? Also good for very good bedtimes with the high priestess, okay? Knight of Swords and the Chariot, okay? You may be making a move towards someone to speak to someone. Exactly what I said. Um, chariot here, movement towards victory, all right? Um, let's see, shall we? Okay. All right, so um, what I see here is a goal of communication, eight of wands and movement, okay? Also, I saw the chariot at the bottom, okay? Exactly what I said. Um, all right, what I see as a hope here is that you can temper yourself and mix properly. You may have such heightened emotions that have been on the simmer for a while that you're not properly dealing with. This has come up in all of your readings. Please go back and check them if you haven't. They're under separate playlists for May and April, okay? Um, and then what I also see here is there is like some fear around a nine of pentacles, okay? This is independence, okay? So you may be holding on to something here, okay? Either you're worried about fully building your independence and speaking from your heart independently, you may have other pressures around you that have nothing to do with you, especially to deal with those squares. Please listen to my intro on that, okay? Um, that are 
giving you a great sense of responsibility here where you feel like you're it's getting to a boiling point here Scorpio it's been in all your readings okay um, and it's playing out here but what I see here as a goal which is a very healthy goal is communication okay um, what I also see as a goal here is King of Wands you also want to act passionately Scorp okay um, King of Wands is a very passionate individual, charismatic, okay, and not afraid to act passionately, okay? There may be some feelings of restriction around that right now, Scorpio. It's come up in all your readings. Um, all right, and what I see as a goal here is Queen of Pentacles. You may have a goal of a Queen of Pentacles-like person, all right, or fully taking um, hold of a Queen of Pentacles-like role in your own self. Queen of Pentacles is a great parent, okay? She's also a great... Um, she also brings bread to the table, you know, bacon to the table, meat to the table, however you want to say it, okay? She's very, she's very, she's good with money, and she's, and she's warm, okay, um, and loving, all right? Um, very close to the empress, all right? Queen of Pentacles in reverse is very materialistic, okay? All about the money, not all about the love, okay? Identify which one, okay? Um, but it is a goal. Okay, so I'm assuming if you're going towards this person or you have a goal of this person, it is not, you know, it's in the upright, not in the reversed, okay? Um, and then, like I said, you know, um, with this King of Wands, this is what makes me think it's another person because related to this King of Wands that you want to act in is this Queen of Pentacles, okay? Virgo, Capricorn, Taurinian energy, okay? What I have here as a fear is um, Four of Cups, continued feelings of discontent here. Okay, about what? A missing Ace of Cups, which I discussed at length in your actual uh, romance reading, I believe, last month and this month. Okay, and the choice you have to make here, Scorpio, is whether you speak some truths or not. Ace of Swords, delivery, talking, communication of what? Divine gifts about truths, deep down truths. You're a deep person, Scorp. Okay, that's it. You guys are simple and easy. I read for you guys, so you're like... Thank you for that. If you guys, if it's, I feel like it's you guys. Anyway, um, I can do it with some signs. Some signs are easier than others. Anyway, thank you. Um, all right, I'm going to move to Sagittarius. Sagittarius, if you're born near the Scorpio Sag cusp, this is going to be a um, much more intense. If you're born or have a sun moon rising at the um, Scorpio Sag cusp, you will be extremely close to this um, eclipse, which is at 25, 26 degrees of Scorpio, okay? So um, it will be a much more intense one for you, okay? Almost as if it was in your own sign, okay? Um, if it's your moon, it will, it will even heighten the emotions even more, okay? If it's in your ascendant and your outward personality, if it's in your sun, you will feel it on a soul level, okay? Take it as it resonates. Either way, you're going to feel it. Okay, if you're born in the beginning of Sag, okay, um, or have any of those aspects at the, at the beginning of Sag, okay. In general, this would normally hit on your 12th and your 6th house cusp with the full moon being in your 12th house. So you're going to have heightened emotions, about, especially about things that you've kept underneath the radar for a while here, Sag, okay. 12th house themes are secluded themes, themes we don't always talk about. When you're dealing with the moon in the 12th house, you're talking about major emotions that you've kept under wraps, okay especially if you're born near that cusp line, okay, or any other planets near those signs, okay? They're going to start percolating to the surface that have been there for a while, okay? Mars is currently transiting your fourth house, house of home, okay? Again, these full moons have to do with, um, have to do with our most intimate relationships in our home in general and in general and a normal full moon, let alone a, a full moon eclipse, okay? And then um, Pluto is in the 12th for you guys okay so Pluto is transiting the 12th house again oh no 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 sorry yeah I was like wait what <laughs> yeah um so for you Pluto's in the second which is your um which is the house of income okay which is the natural ruler of Taurus to begin with income ways we earn income what we value around the home what we value as to beauty what we value as to those are going undergoing massive transformation for you right now, Sag, okay? Because Pluto is transformation, okay? And this full moon is in Scorpio. So what you held as beautiful is undergone a transformation. What you valued as to making money and as to home and items of second, second house matters as well, you know, transforming, okay? With Pluto there, all right? Pluto is the modern day ruler of Scorpio, which is why I mention it, okay? Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio, which is why I mentioned what houses those are going through, okay? So that said, 
I'm going to cut this and pull a spread free. The fool is at the bottom. You want to make a fool's leap here. King of Wands underneath that. Passionate. Okay. King of Wands is totally you and your power. Okay. So that's what's behind this here. Okay. have here, Sag, and this has also popped up in your readings about you feeling very, very restricted in your life on a family basis as well as business basis. That was also somewhat tied into love, so please go back and check your readings if you haven't already. Popped up last month and this month. Um, is I see that you have a goal of Nine of Wands. Okay, When your goal is a Nine of Wands, that tells me that you're afraid that you're not going to be able to live another day not live another day, but fight another day, be a wounded warrior, be able to continue on through completion from a nine to a 10, okay? Um, you feel like a wounded warrior, all right? You are a wounded warrior, you're tired. You're very tired. You're going to be able to do it, okay? You are all about the wands, all right? You're gonna be able to do it if you do it with emotion because you guys are feeling very restricted around those things right now I discussed in your reading, okay? Um, and what I see here as you wanting to really act from a place of strength, okay, to tame your inner beast, okay? And I told you I felt like you had some restrictions around home and family and stuff like that and business where you felt like you couldn't really speak on some things. It popped up last month and this month and strength is popping up here, which is excellent. That's your goal is to have the strength to what? To nine of wands, be a wounded warrior and continue to completion. You can do it, Sag. Okay. Um, I do see a fear here around some news. Page of Wands could be a child. Okay. Okay. If you have any concerns around a child right now, could have to do with that child, Sag. All right. Um, could ha it, it showed up in reverse. I don't read reversals. Could have to do with behavioral issues or co-parenting the child, whatever it is. Okay. You will know if that specifically applies to you. Otherwise, there's a fear around getting bad news, specifically related to events that keep popping up in your chart, specifically related to ambition, family, and business. Take it as it resonates, okay? Um, the second thing I see here is a goal of the Knight of Swords. You want to take swift movement to communicate with somebody, whether it's in family, business, or love. You want to act in a Knight of Swords-like manner and take swift movement towards someone, okay? I see here, and a hope related to that, the High Priestess could be towards a Pisces, could also be towards wanting to do it in a spiritual manner. You will be able to do it in a spiritual manner, okay? And from a loving, higher octave manner, especially around the time. Or it could be that you want to take swift movement to communicate with, some, with somebody about some secrets, okay, that you need to share with them. Take it as it resonates, Sagittarius. You know which one is which, okay? Um, I do have a fear here around passion, Ace of Wands. Family, ambition, and passion, Ace of Wands. Spirit, family, ambition, passion. Some duality here, Sag, okay? And I felt you, you know, okay? And the choice is, are you going to fulfill your own wishes or not? Wish fulfillment, Nine of Cups. Wish fulfillment, Nine of Cups. What are we here for, Sag? I think I said that to you last month at the end of your general reading or at the end of your love reading. What are we doing here? Go back and watch this if you haven't Sagittarius, okay? You guys are all fire. You guys are going to be great. You're going to be fine. You had your major arcana pop up, okay, all over the place, all right? So you guys are going to be do wonderful. Let me know how it goes, okay? I'm going to, um, I'm going to move on. Oh, let me see if I have any other notes for you real quick. Um, I do. No, I'm done. We're done. We're done. Okay. Capricorn. Capricorn, Capricorn. I hope you guys are doing well. Okay. Um, I am going to just give you some quick notes here while I shuffle these. 
All right, this is on the, the full moon will be in the 11th house, which is your networks, okay? You may have some troubles around those or heightened sense of, of emotions around those for whatever reason, okay? Um, at the time of the full moon, all right, the sun will be in the fifth house. That has to do with romance, children, creativity, all right? Mars is in your third. That has to do with communication, okay? Mars is transiting the third house. Third house is communication. That can make uh, for some more um, heavy sharp, argumentative, five of wands, feeling communications, okay? Um, and then Pluto is in the first. Obviously, I've talked about that at length in your guys' general readings, okay? Can be rather rough, okay? But it's at towards the end, okay? And there is a, there's some positive, there's no negative squares, okay? There's no negative squares from Pluto, okay? So that's, that's a benefit, all right, to this full moon. In fact, there's a trine, near trine. Okay, so that will be beneficial. Okay, so positive transformation, especially in first house matters and third house matters, is on offer and tap if you can tap in. Okay, I think you can. I know you can. You guys always do. Okay, so that said, let's pull a quick spread, shall we? Queen of Wands at the bottom. Four swords underneath that and the star. Very beautiful. All right. I see a goal of a page of pentacles. Okay. You hope to hear news or bring offer of news could be related to work. All right. You, you have a hope of being able to hold on to your money, but still be able to maybe move with this thing. Okay. You have a fear that possibly surrounding, um, that you missed some divine timing on this matter. Take it out as it resonates. All right. Um, I have the Wheel of Fortune popped in reverse. I don't usually read reversals, but I'll discuss it in here, all right? Um, the other thing I see is that you want to speak in an assertive manner, and you hope when you do, I have a Queen of Swords here at the bottom as a goal, okay? You want to be able to speak in an assertive manner. It's going to surround these issues and houses I discussed, okay, around the time of the full moon, okay? Um, I, I see a hope that you also want to either move towards a King of Cups-like figure, or you want to be able to speak from the heart, from a deep emotional heart space to this King of Cups or, or like a King of Cups, okay? Take it as it resonates, okay, Cappy? Um, the other thing I see here with this Page of Pentacles, I think I already discussed, but the uh, fear I have is you might be have been waiting for a while for this person to speak to you or waiting for your ships to come in as to this person, okay, that in results that you have not seen yet, okay, so that might be part of the discussion you want to have, okay, and the choice that you have, Capricorn, is um, Ten of Cups, are you going to chase your Ten of Cups or are you not? Go for your Ten of Cups, we only live once, Ten of Cups, ultimate emotional fulfillment, okay, at home and with family, okay, that's your choice, you, you set the tone. Okay, Cappy, um, that's what I got. I am going to move on to Aquarius now. How are you, Aqua? I hope you guys are doing great. This is on the 10th and 4th house access for you guys. I discussed home at length for the last eclipse, which was in the 4th house, okay, the partial solar eclipse. This one's going to be in the 10th house, opposite house, okay? You may have issues of the career, heightened emotional um, intuition about changes in your career and or um, major emotional motion, uh, emotional high points as to your career around the time of this um, full moon, okay? Especially if you're an ascendant Aquarius, okay? All right, but I would interpret it as if it was the 10th house regardless, okay? Sun, moon, rising, Venus without looking at your particular chart, okay? Um, so 10th house will be heightened place of, of emotion. You're going to have squares, which I discussed in the intro. Please make sure you check those out as well as your moon sign. If you know what that is, that's very easy to find. Okay. Mars is um, currently transiting your second house. Okay. Lots of changes in drive and action around your coin right now. Income, the way you earn income, your values surrounding what you value as to the ways you earn an income and, um, the things that you value at home too and in relationships in general all right pluto is transiting the 12th house okay pluto and transiting the 12th approaching the ascendant of aquarius is a, is, a, is a tight spot you can feel the pressure of the transformation from your 12th house headed to your first house that's a big deal i discussed that last month for you guys okay and we'll discuss it more in separate pluto readings okay that said let's cut this puppy for you and make a read you have the Ten of Swords at the bottom, okay? We don't see coming as some sort of ending. 
to a situation, okay? Justice is behind that. Karmic justice attached to it, okay? Five of Pentacles and Ten of Wands is behind that. And behind that is reconciliation or celebration with Three of Cups, okay? Or, or an end to some third-party situations, okay? Ten of Swords in Justice, Five of Pentacles, Ten of Wands. Okay, I'm not looking any further in the back of this book for this one, okay? Let's, let's move on with the, okay? My deck is upside down. Yeah, same deal. Okay, Aqua. What I see here is that you have a goal of closing out a cycle and ending a chapter here on something major. World card, okay? That is one of your goals, okay? And it's going to come to a heightened sense of feeling around the time of this full moon related to the houses in question that I, that I talked to you about and the items I talked about um, at the front runner intro of this All Signs reading. What I see here as a goal is that you do want to deliver some news, okay, to someone in regards to work or money or, or, or an offer of some sort, okay, page of pentacles, okay, you want to talk to somebody about an ending or the end of a cycle or chapter as to something, okay, what I see as a fear here is three of swords, you're afraid of heartbreak, okay, um, what I have here also is we have uh, five of wands, Okay, you, there may have been a lot of cattiness or sparring or tension or training going on in your immediate environment. This came up in your reading as well. It's a hot, hot card this month, as well as the Five of Swords, which is not a good card. Um, anyway, the Five of Wands is, is, is a little bit better. Anyways, um, you may feel like you're training for something, all right? You know, whether that's emotional training, um, spiritual training, um, inward healing training, all right, that may be a goal of yours right now, okay, um, what I see as a hope with that is that Knight of Swords, you can take swift action towards things that maybe you've been stalling out on, or um, communication, okay, action and communication, Knight of Swords, okay, and um, fear, I have strength, you, you may be fearful that you don't have enough strength to do it, okay, all right, and the choice that is going to involve whether you meet your goals, okay, or not listed here, applicable as to those houses as I as I went over is death transformation. Are you ready to? Are you? Gonna, it's your choice. Transform or don't transform, or stay where you are. That's your choice. Death card. Okay. All right, Aqua. I love you guys. Okay. Let me know how it goes, and um, I will see you in your other readings. Okay. Have a wonderful eclipse. Stay safe. Um, all right. Um, Pisces, last but not least, how is my fish? How is my fish? You have Mars conjunct your modern ruler in your sign, okay, in your first house. Okay, so you have a trine. Okay, a wonderful, Mars isn't like always wonderful in Pisces, okay, but conjunct your modern ruler and trine a full moon, it's amazing. Okay, so you're going to have a feeling passionate and loving, all right? Um, wonderful expressions there for you guys, all right? For this full moon will be quite nice, all right? Um, and it will play out on your immediate personality. You will be able to speak out courageously and with valor around the time of this full moon, all right? Pluto's in the 11th house, transforming your networks around you right now. That is a long-term transit, so you know exactly how that's been playing out and what how it's um, playing out now that it's reaching the latter degrees as well. Okay? So that said, let's cut these cards. Take a little read for you, okay? Bottom of the deck is the Knight of Pentacles, okay? Underneath that, we have the Five of Swords. And then behind that, we have the Hierophant, okay? Major Commitment and the Tower, okay? Or Moving Up and the Hermit and the Star. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, let's see. Goal, Ten of Cups, ultimate joy and happiness. Hope surrounding that is Nine of Pentacles, that you can maintain your independence somewhat, even if you go after the goal of the Ten of Cups, okay? Which you can, enter dependence. You can do it, okay? Um, you're not going to lose yourself. 
You're not going to lose yourself, okay? Um, goal two, eight of swords. You want to free yourself from your own mental imprisonment, which was already stated just with this, okay? You have some fears around communications here related to that ten of cups. You need not fear, okay? These are the ultimate wishes of happiness in your everyday life. Ten of cups. If somebody can't meet you for that or you can't get that, you're going to get that on your own, okay? Um, all right. Okay, I do have a fear around um, mourning right now, okay, or loss, five of cups, okay, related to this fear of this mental imprisonment that you've kept yourself into, maybe tied to mourning. You're, you're wondering when it's going to end. Pisces, take it as it resonates. You're wondering when it's going to end. It's going to just start to take hold of the two cups you have left. You know what cups are important. Don't be afraid to love while you mourn. Don't be afraid to love while you mourn. And the mourning will end when it ends. Okay? You don't need to rush that part. But don't be afraid to love while you mourn. Okay? Those worthy. All right? And um, also I have here four of pentacles you're a little worried about. Hold it on your money. Okay? Or saying the wrong thing. Or a little bit of both. Okay? All right? You don't need to worry about that. Okay? The choice here is Ace of Pentacles. Brand new thing on offer. I feel like this popped up for you guys last time, or Virgo, in the um, other Eclipse reading. Okay, Ace of Pentacles. Grab hold of this Ace. It's a divine gift and run with it, Pisces. Beautiful. Okay, let me know how it goes. I'll be thinking of you guys. All right? Thank you guys so much for joining me and let me know how the Eclipse goes. Stay safe and um, it should be a good one. Thank you.